Welcome to the saddle. This video will guide you through the saddle pose. And you'll be in the pose for about five minutes, but please listen to your body. If you need to come out earlier, please do so. This can be a rather juicy pose. We can begin the saddle by simply sitting on the heels. And then we want to check to make sure this pose is going to be available to us today. The first thing to check are your ankles, and then check the knees. This is a deep opening for the top of the ankles, so if it's too much, you can reduce the amount of sensation by taking a, a towel and just placing it underneath the ankles. That will create a little bit of a bridge, which may make it a bit more accessible to you. If the knees feel uncomfortable, another option here is to sit up a bit higher, perhaps sitting up on one or two cushions. Just place the cushions between the feet. And then check how this feels. Once you've determined how your ankles and your knees are going to feel, the next stage to go a bit deeper into the saddle is to simply walk your hands away from you and lean on your arms. Now we're starting to get a stress through the ankles, the knees, and the lumbar spine here. You'll also be a bit heavy into the arms and the shoulders, that's okay. Now only if you know you have no neck issues, you can maybe try the option of lengthening the neck and drop the head back. This provides a lovely stretch for the front of the throat and a compression for the cervical spine moving backwards. We can call this stage one. After a minute or so, if the body opens up and you feel you can go further, the next stage is to walk the hands further away and perhaps come onto your elbows. As before, you have the option of keeping the head up or dropping the head back. Flexible students might be able to rest on the top of their head. Or some people like to rest their head onto a block or a bolster. The next option for those that are more flexible is to come even deeper into the pose. Perhaps resting their spine on a bolster. As always, when the body feels supported, the muscles can relax. If you can rest onto a bolster and you feel supported, if you'd like, you can also bring the arms over your head, lightly clasping the elbows and getting a nice stress to the upper chest area as well. As always, when you bring your arms over your head, be aware of tingling in the fingers or the palms. This is usually a sign that you're compressing a nerve bundle. It's called the brachial plexus. And if you ignore it, you can to stress the nerve, you may actually permanently damage the nerves. your edges. Be where it's doable, where it's not too much, where it's not too low. And then we hold for time. Keep bringing your 
awareness back to the flow of your breath. And pay attention to the sensations that you're experiencing right now. of the spine. So we'd like to move the spine in the opposite direction. Remember there are many other options for coming out of the pose if coming up is not available to you. If you feel like you need a crane or a forklift to get you up, try rolling to one side. We come into child's pose because it's a nice flexion of the spine. We like to move in the opposite direction. So just allow your back to round here for a few breaths. The other thing we like to do is to straighten the knees. The knees have been bent for quite a while with a lot of pressure on them. So the crocodile can be a lovely counter pose here. Simply straighten the legs out behind you for a few breaths, pulling the heels away, tightening the kneecaps, and then slowly lowering down, turning your head to the side. Just rest here for a breath or two before you move on to your next posture. <laughs> 